pretty expensive if you look at the volume. Because if you are a rich uh, urban consumer in a city and you buy something this big, you'll get it much cheaper. But because they're in the small sachets, the people in villages can actually buy them because they don't have 100 rupees to spend on cheaper shampoo bought in bulk. They can buy shampoo, one shampoo at a time in a sachet for one rupee and pay 20 times what someone in the city will pay. But you can see that although this is the market today enabling people who did not have access to shampoo getting shampoo, so it's creating a bigger market. It's not a market of perfect competition because you have very high transaction costs, which means that smaller transactions cost much more per unit. So you do not have an even distribution of prices. Now, perfect competition is a very theoretical construct because it almost never exists in reality, at least not in the marketplace of trading products, but it does exist in many other areas if you take the analogy further. Scientific progress depends on the free, even open, flow of knowledge, competition of ideas. It drives innovation. The stronger the competition between ideas, the more likely um, innovation is going to take place. Um, scientific history is full of all sorts of wonderful little notions that were thought of at that time as the, uh, you know, the, the scientific truth of the day. My favorite is, uh, is phlogiston, which was uh, a 17th century notion that fire is consumed of particles called phlogiston, and everything has an element of heat in it, which is phlogiston, and you could, you could take the heat out, and you would get combustion, and you would put the heat in, and you would get metal, and all sorts of things like that would happen. And that seemed to make sense. It made sense to most people at that time, and it was overthrown because of an open exchange of ideas, the ability for anyone, not just the one scientist who liked phlogiston, the ability of anyone to conduct experiments, to validate scientific ideas through experimentation. It is, of course, much harder today because uh, not everyone has access you know, to, uh, to the super collider in CERN. Well, even the people in CERN don't really have access to it. But it's, uh, it's much more expensive to do experiments. But in principle, there is no barrier. Anyone can do it, at least in theory. And the more competition there is, the greater the progress of science. And this is clearly well understood and accepted. It's not really controversial. People don't say, we will have better science if uh, we don't share knowledge. People do say, we will, have, we will make more money if we don't share knowledge. Or at least, we, the ones who have these ideas, will make more money. Maybe society won't. But nobody says that science will progress with that. So. Um, Innovation is clearly driven through a free flow of competition.